In today's video, we're gonna be building a retaining wall out of concrete retaining wall blocks. Let's get started. All right, so we've got our wall dug out and we went an additional four feet back from the wall. Now this wall is gonna be a six foot high wall. Technically we would need to go back six feet, but our property line is like right here. So this is what we're working with. Now, when it comes to a retaining wall, one of the most important things is going to be your base or your preparing that first course. We've got a six inch footing below that. We've already gone ahead and dug that out. It's about six to eight inches. We started with just a couple inches of this 6A crushed limestone, and we packed that down into that trench, that footing, and then we laid that landscape fabric, and that's just gonna prevent any settling and give us a nice firm base and help lock all of that in before dumping that six foot, or six inch, rather, footing. And then we compacted that down and then off camera we even came back and used a vibratory compactor to make sure that everything was nice and locked in. Now what we're going to do is line up the back of our first course. We've got one inch setbacks on all of this stone so we're going to make sure or figure out where we want the top of our wall and then account for that down for the first course. We're going to level that first course side to side and then we're going to pitch it just slightly back so that when we get to the top our coping is pitched back behind the wall so all the water drains that way now the good thing about this stone that we're using is that it has a tongue and groove which means that it's structural and it's going to support the weight of the wall with some geo grid that we'll add and i'll talk about that later but let's go ahead and get started on the first course which is the most important course of the entire wall Okay, so now we are going to prepare this back hill so that we can backfill around it and we can drain properly behind our wall. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by laying filter fabric, non-woven filter fabric down on this ground. We've got about a six foot wide strep, or stretch, six foot wide roll. So we're gonna lay that down and then we're gonna lay our perforated drain pipe. Now the perforated drain pipe that I have has a sock on it, which is not really necessary because you have the filter fabric that's gonna filter out all the silt, but we're gonna lay the fabric, then the drain pipe, and then we can start stacking our next course and backfilling with that drain gravel. Okay, so we got two courses of block in. The first course is gonna be buried. The second course is technically our first course above grade. And then we backfilled it with drainage stone. Now, in order to stabilize this wall, the issue with the hill is that there's, or any retaining wall that's of any height is gonna have a lot of back pressure from the hill. 
and there's, call, there's this thing called the angle of repose, which essentially means that this hill, if left untouched, would eventually work its way like this. So right now, that line would be kind of right here. What this fabric does is it essentially makes this wall move that angle of repose back so that we're taking a lot of the pressure off of our retaining wall. So this is capable of holding back 2,400 pounds per square foot. Now, this is going to tie our wall back further, and as we add that stone, it is going to connect all of that together so that this is one whole unit. Now, we've got four feet here. Technically, you would want to go back as far as your wall is tall, which would be six foot, but like I said before, we've got a property line right there, and we don't want to be digging into the neighbor's property. So we're going to kind of increase the amount of layers that we do with this to hopefully add enough strength so we're, we won't have any issues. Now this is going to lay over top of the stone and then the next course is gonna sit directly on top of that and that is going to lock this into the wall. And then when we add our next layer of drainage rock, we'll make sure this is nice and tight and then that will lock everything together and tie this back into the hill. Okay, so like I said before, the geo grid that ties back into the hill is really what adds the stability to this wall and keeps it from falling over, but also all of that stone that we added behind it as well is gonna provide that drainage, and then that drain pipe is gonna take it away. That's gonna take a lot of pressure off the wall. Now, after we got the wall built in place, then we need to cover up the top with that filter fabric, and that's gonna provide any sediment from working its way down into that drainage rock and keeping that all free flowing water going down behind the, behind the wall and then out that drain pipe. Now we've got the capstones up here and then a couple of loose stones as we on our taper down, our steps down on the wall and we'll need to adhere those in place. As you can see, these are still loose. So if they get bumped or walked on, they're gonna move around a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some adhesive and glue those in place. For the adhesive, we're gonna be using DAP's all Persive Adhesive and Filler. This is perfect for bonding these top capstones and any loose blocks together to prevent movement when they're bumped and whatnot. Now, the good thing about this is it's got a 20 minute working time. It's gonna fill any of those voids and really get into the pores of the concrete on both sides to attach those blocks together. The other plus side of this product is that it is waterproof and rain ready immediately. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I learned a ton throughout the process, the research and the process of building this retaining wall. And projects like this are where you can save yourself a ton of money because the labor involved with building a wall like this is pretty expensive. So that being said, until next time, be safe and happy building.